Today, we're identifying the distractions in our lives and kicking them to the curb. Christine Kane, Lisa Harper, Crystal Evans Hurst, and Christy Wright are with us. So come on and join our conversation and get ready to overcome. A few weeks ago, I was recording uh, here at TBN for my show on Equip and Empower. And as I'm, I'm on camera, I'm recording. What I didn't know was someone had hacked <laughs> uh, my phone and my accounts and everything and sent out uh, social media posts that were not authorised by wow. me. So you could imagine, it's an, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> while I'm recording, talking about the love of God and the <laughs> grace of God. And, and so I've got to record 19 shows in two days uh, and I come out at the halfway mark and I've got my team here and everyone's like, Christine, this has happened and, you know, your phone. Now, <laughs> let me just say, if something's going to distract you while you're trying <laughs> right. to film 19 oh shows, oh my word. it was um, this mm. happening and, you know, people posing as you and posting things that are not you and, you know, you right. have to take it down, make an apology. Um, and it just seems over the last maybe year of my life, there have yeah. been things like that where you're just totally blindsided because, as we all know, I'm like, miss, I'm focused. Uh, Christine, right. you're running in your lane. And, in fact, the older I get, the more focused I become. And as yeah. post-50, it seems like my blinkers are on yeah. like a racehorse. I, I, I'm going, I'm running for the prize because I'm thinking more about finishing at, at this point yeah. because I've yeah. got less time ahead of me than I've got right. behind me. And so it really brought... To my attention again, I remember one uh, sitting with Nick after a couple of big things happened and I said, it's like the enemy really wants to distract me. Like I'm so focused and some things and if he can't distract me because like my kids are easily distracted, I'm like, go up and do your homework and then I go in and it is amazing. One is on FaceTime because mm -hmm. she's Miss Social Butterfly uh, talking to everyone. The other one's playing these games with it. And I'm like, this is awesome. When is your homework <laughs> going to get done? Yeah. Apparently that's not the priority, <laughs> right. of which I'm the opposite. You know, I'm like, I've got everything done, then we might play a game. And so um, it's almost like if you can't distract you that way, in my case, it'll be like, okay, whether it's a hack or something else will happen that will blow up that I've got no control over. And I remember saying to Nick, it's like people want me to come down, either respond to something, answer this thing, answer this call, answer this accusation, be whatever it is. And I said, but, you know, Nehemiah said to Sanballat, to Tobiah, he said, now why should I come down off the wall right. um, just because you all want to have a little chit-chat with me or just because you want to have... Um, you know, you want to accuse me of things. So in the early parts of the book of Nehemiah, they're accusing him of his right. motives and right. your motives are wrong and you just want to do this. And he says, I'm not coming down off the wall. Then later on in Nehemiah, they're trying to woo him. That's right. Come down and have dinner with That's us. Right. Come down and go out with us. And so whichever way the enemy will try to do it right. is if there's an assignment to build the wall, he's going to try to get you off, either by knocking you yeah. off, by accusation, by criticism or even by wooing, sure. come and do. And I think in many of my friends, um, it's not that they're going to be distracted by some great big sin, come and, you know, commit adultery, come and do. It's right. actually going to be distracted by a good thing right. more than a God thing for this season, right. I see. Right, right. That's good. You know, I think that there is no one on the planet that is not susceptible to be being distracted. Now, you know, I'm in the middle of grad school, I'm writing a new book, um, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, and I lead A21 and Propel, so I've got a lot, go a lot going on. And I had a couple of friends that called me the other night, and they're like, Chris, you know, let's go out and watch a movie. Now, the fact is, I love these people. I knew that we would go out, we would have dinner, we would watch a movie. It would be absolutely awesome. I could even justify it, like, you know, I need a break. I work so hard. I don't get to see my friends that much. But here is the deal. There were some priorities that I had to get done and there was a paper that I had to finish for school, whether I wanted to or not. Now, I could have said yes to my friends, but that would have meant that I would have been out way late, then I would have stayed up even later finishing the paper, which then would have kicked into the next day. That would have affected the mood I was in when I got up, how I operated the next day. So to avoid all the cumulative effect of one distraction that would have been good, could have even been justified, would have been a heck of a lot of fun, but by saying no to that one distraction, because really it wasn't the main priority for that night, really I believe that I salvaged my whole week. Sometimes it can be a small thing like that, 
And now I'm not saying there are other times where maybe it's okay to do that, but that I have such little margin in my life over the next three weeks, and I'm so aware of that, that one small tweak would have a cumulative effect over the next week for sure. And I think we have to be careful not to underestimate the power of a distraction to not only take something away from that moment, but actually to have a cumulative effect over the next week or so. So it's the little foxes that destroy the vine. I think without a shadow yeah. of a doubt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting because to me, it really is a seasonal thing because your kids are older. I feel like because Missy's nine and I'm a single parent, my life is a distraction. That's how I feel, same I mean, way. Every yeah. single yeah. day, <laughs> it's when I'm writing, when I'm studying, it is mommy, 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 mommy. And of course, I prayed for so many decades. Totally. Um, but I would actually hear that word yeah, ascribed right. to me, That's that right. term. That to get to have this gift from the Lord, I will choose to leave my study of the parables and the synoptic gospels. Yeah to go fix her macaroni and cheese because for this season of my life, Jesus is first and Missy is second. She is primary to me. And so for me, it's even understanding what distractions are are actually just part of the seasonal part of life. You know, Beekner says life itself is grace. And so I'm trying to learn what do I put on the back burner and go, I'll come back for you later. I'm not completely giving up on you. You are actually a calling. You're just not today's calling. And she's, yeah. it's not that Missy is a distraction in this case. It's that's the priority. Right. right. And you're like a bit social. So I know we'll get right. on the phone. I'm like, Lisa, you cannot invite this. You have got to <laughs> let go of the, so for you, those other things that were once priority. You're my focus. Yeah. Right. I am on your focus. Yeah. <laughs> um, those things have now become distractions. Right. And, and so to right. continue to keep something as a main priority that was. And there's nothing wrong with it. In that season, right. it absolutely was a priority. But now that Missy has come, that thing is not a right. priority yeah. anymore. Um, some of those people may not understand that. Right. But the fact is for you, I think we could get really messed up when we make distractions priorities and priorities distractions. <laughs> right. when they, yeah. Because we don't discern the season, we'll really. I mean, there are times I just, man, I'm so grateful. Uh, that God wove Chris Kane into my life, but sometimes I want to punch her in the throat because she just tells the truth. I mean, she just straight tells the truth. Uh, I called her not too long ago. Um, I was on this crazy trip, just driving all over the place and flying all over the place, going from one event to the next. And she literally yelled at me over FaceTime and she said, God did not tell you to do this. I was like, I know, but I really like these people. <laughs> Just so motivated, oftentimes by guilt. And God never, ever asked us to do something out of guilt. Um, it's always my signature at the bottom of contracts of overcommitment. And that's what Chris reminds me of, usually in a very straightforward way. Lisa, if God didn't tell you to do this, then you're not helping anybody by over committing. You're damaging your own heart and you're gonna negatively affect Missy. And actually, you weren't the right person to go teach at this event. Um, it's kind of like I used to go to work when I was younger, really, I'm embarrassed to say up until about 10 years ago, I would go to work sick. And I thought I was being a hero. So I'm like, I feel terrible and I've got a fever, but I'm gonna buck up and go to work. And it wasn't until a coworker said, why are you coming to work with the flu? I don't want you to give me the flu. That is so disrespectful. And I was like, huh, I thought I was being a hero. When in reality, I was just making it all about me, motivated by guilt, wanting to be a martyr. And so that's really what I'm learning in the process of learning is if I'm doing this to make other people happy instead of doing it because God says, this is what I've called you to, that's not ministry. That actually is idolatry. We'll talk about really. good in God. Chris, you mentioned it's a, a good, good thing, thing in God. Yeah, and I think the more we go on with God, uh, the more good things we have to keep letting go of in mm. order to embrace the God thing. You know, to my knowledge at this moment in my life, there's not a gaping antichrist thing in my life that I have to let go of. You know, it's, right. it's it pretty much everything is good and really good. Things that I would never have dreamt that I would have the opportunity to do so. Everything I have to let go of to do the next God thing is mm -hmm. a really good thing. Yeah, and yeah. often I have to let go of really big good things mm -hmm. to do a smaller God thing mm -hmm. for this next mm -hmm. season that's gonna yeah. take yeah. me to the next big thing. Yeah. So that's really learning to discern the voice of God. Yeah.
So, so what do we do when we just wake up and the first thing we do is just grab our phone? That is called stupidity. <laughs> I would. As a distraction to your day or your sure. time with the Lord or your time with your husband or, or to, and you know that you should be doing something else, but just those little distractions in your life. You know, oh, yeah. it comes down to what you were saying about the priorities because the distractions vary on a scale from yeah, phone sure. to your kids. And sometimes sure. you're having trouble sorting through, like, what do I do in this moment where I don't know about you guys, but especially in parenting, like my mom did it all just like yeah. you yeah. are doing. You don't get a break. Yeah. And then, so you want to treasure these moments. When my son comes up and wants me to read a book, it's like, you want to treasure those moments. And I can't treasure every single moment because we've got to right. do some things and go some places right. and live our lives. And so you're always kind of like in this right. back and forth um, balance. But I feel like one of the things I've noticed with my time is like the phone specifically is like a black hole where <laughs> oh, you yeah. pick it up to do one thing sure. and 30 minutes goes by. Right. And what's amazing is if you look at, like if we talk about time in our culture, like we all have the same amount of time, we all have 24 hours in a day. It's amazing how I think a lot of women feel like we don't have any time. I don't have any time. I don't have any time for myself. I don't have any time to work out. I don't have any time for my values or hobbies or marriage. I don't have time to go on a date with my husband and those type of things. But research shows the average American spends three to five hours a day watching TV and checks their phone 150 times a day. It's yeah. unbelievable. So this is what I said at Propel. We don't have a time problem. We have a priority problem. Yeah. And so if you know what your priorities are, yeah. and I think all of us would agree Facebook is not a priority, no. right? Like right. social media is not a priority. Right. Then you can see those things are the most important, the mac and cheese with your daughter, to spend some time with my boys, to, you know, I don't know what's going on on, I don't know who got the rose. I don't know what's right. going on in most, <laughs> yeah. you know, that type of right. thing. And I don't hate TV, like my husband and I have our shows, but when you have limited time, yeah. then it helps you think about what is a distraction and what is my focus? It goes back to what you said earlier, like what is the number one goal? What's the number one focus? Distraction is <laughs> pervasive. It is everywhere all the time and you will be as distracted as you allow yourself to be because distractions are non-stop. We can and will be distracted by the things we're interested in and even by the things we're not interested in. We can be distracted by the things that, um, that fight for our attention or we can be dis distracted by the things that just happen to be in our way on a particular day. Uh, Hollywood is distracting us with movies and TV and entertainment. The internet is distracting us by everything we wanna know under the sun at the, you know, the tap of a few keys in a Google search bar. Um, Fifth Avenue is distracting us with products and this new nail color polish and this new hairstyle. I mean, we're distracted by good things. I'm distracted when my kids have five million requests for me between a 30 minute time span. And I love my kids. I'm distracted all the time by all the things. So distraction is a problem because it's everywhere. And if you don't have a battle plan for being focused, you will live distracted. And the sad thing is, it doesn't matter what you're distracted by, good or bad. What matters is that when you succumb to distraction, you're losing time. Social media, if you look at it in a good light, gives us access to help millions of people, sure. right? Like, so it's this unbelievable opportunity to reach people with God's word, to be a voice of truth and life in that space. Um, but it also can be a distraction. It can be something that we talked about this earlier. That's kind of like a black hole. It's like, oh, I just had to check my text messages. And then you're on Instagram and then 30 minutes has passed. And you're like, what happened to me? I'm scrolling right. cat memes. You know, you didn't mean right. to. So I think just right. by the nature of the medium, it can distract us and it becomes a slippery slope. You can watch Better Together episodes on demand. Go to bettertogether.tv to stream all of our latest conversations. There was a time you would have, you would know, you'd put in your calendar, that's when we've got either a family reunion or we've got a school right. reunion or we've got our friends are going to get together here. But I think with the, if we don't control it, right. just because there is Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, right. I wasn't going to have a friend reunion every day, ever, before, let alone right. 150 checks of that a day. Right. Like, right. That, that wasn't right. happening. And so people would say, well, you know, how did you fit into grad school into your life? And how do you fit? Well, right. Right. because I'm not living on social right. media right. every right. Uh, day because I... I didn't before, like I did, as in even before that medium existed. So I think just because some things become available to us, the minute you stop using something as a tool to help enhance right. your primary priority right. and then you right. become a slave to it, 
idols right. will always rob you of your yeah. purpose oh, and yeah. destiny. And I oh, think yeah. we have to be careful. Often distractions can be a, an, another word for an idol in a different way. Sure. Something yeah, that is sure. taking you out from your primary purpose. I'm not talking about sitting on a rock thinking about Jesus every day, but I'm saying... Right. We actually do have all the time to do what God's called us to do. Right. If we are willing to say, this thing is a distraction and right. I'm going to labor to enter into a place of rest. So from that place of rest, I could do everything right. God's called mm -hmm. me to do, which means I've got to get rid of distractions that are right. exhausting me, spiritually speaking. There's always things saying, look at me, look at me, look at me. So if that's always there and we have a major case of FOMO, which we do, fear of missing out, then we always feel pulled in all these other directions and we're missing our everyday life. And I, I'll tell you, I speak on life balance a lot of times and I think people get a really mixed up idea about life balance, about, oh, it's 50% of time at work and 50% time at home. And I don't think that's it at all. I think it's about being 100% present wherever you are, realizing that if I'm here with you, I'm here with you and there's nowhere I'd rather be. I'm not thinking about Facebook, I'm not thinking about a TV show, and I'm not even thinking about my kids because you know what, I know they're taken care of. I'm here with you fully present in this moment. What a gift it is to be able to give people that you get to hang out with your attention where you don't look at your phone and you're not thinking about what else is going on, who else is you know, walking in the room. And so, but when I'm home, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna be with my kids and I'm not gonna be thinking about you. I love you, but I'm not gonna be thinking about you. I'm gonna be present with my kids. So wherever you are, be there. I was just gonna say that good versus God, it, we've all heard the illustration of the jar and the big rocks. And yeah. if you put the big rocks in, it's not that there aren't room for little rocks. There's just not as much room as for the little rocks yeah. as if you start with the little rocks. Right. So when we talk about priorities, what are the things that are God things that are the most important things for you to do? And then it's very clear to see, even with all the good things, what there's actually room for. Right. And there's just not as much room for all the little good things that we have. I mean, right. And when we were talking about specifics with just the big rocks, um, I, I know that I need to have so much time every day to get work done. And my kids are at home. I mean, we, we're still homeschooling. So we, we have um, the time with them that I have to put in. We've got, but I have given those things yeah. Big rock spots. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. And even with my children, as much as I don't want to disappoint, as much as I want to be available, as much as, much as I want to be a good mom, whatever right. that is, that means sometimes I tell them, I would love to do that, can't do that right now. Right. Because in order for exactly. me to honor the God-given priorities in my life, right. and there are a long list of those, that means I don't have room for every little thing right. that right. you want me to see right. or be a part of or do. Doesn't mean I'm not here. Yeah. Right. Doesn't right. mean you're not a priority. It just means there's so many little good things. Right that could steal away from the God big yeah. things. Yeah. Um, and they all have to, they all have yeah. to, they all have to fit in the time that's that he's right. given me. And we have to trust that he's given us enough time. And I think if you know that you can control something that's gonna be a distraction, leave it in the other room and forget about it. And if I have my family around, I don't necessarily need my phone on me. And I can leave that upstairs or just little things like that. If you can, tr can control any of that, that's probably what we need to get better at. I have personally had to overcome distractions. I feel like all the things that we talked about today, I've either had to overcome or I'm still working on overcoming, to be honest. But overcoming distractions right now, the world is full of them. My phone is full of them. The TV is full of them. There are plenty of other things I'd rather do often just around the house that provide welcome distractions from the most important thing. But it's a muscle that you build to say no to what you want to do right now because of the yes that you want to be able to give later. It is a muscle to build, to, to put the phone down, to be committed to spending time with the Lord before you do other things. It, it, it's a muscle, but distraction will steal. It will steal away the most important things that you do with your time. So it is so important to overcome it, and I've overcome it a lot, but I'm still working on it. So what do you think about today's topic? Join the conversation on social media. We can't wait to hear from you. I love that you brought up calendar because I did, Chris and I are both in grad school. I went back and started my doctorate and had some close friends go, what in the world are you thinking? And I was like, well, what I'm thinking is I'm a Bible teacher and this is life-giving and I want to study God's word. 
And so I'm going to look at my calendar and go, let me find what is life-giving. And mm -hmm. I'm just making the turn. Right. So I'm wildly overcommitted this season, mm -hmm. but I have made very intentional changes going into the next year where things are coming off. But for this season, when I don't have enough bandwidth, when I get on a plane tomorrow, mm -hmm. I don't watch Netflix on the plane. Right. I work on my paper that's due <laughs> for my doctorate. So I think mm -hmm. sometimes yeah. we go okay, this is a really tough season. It's like, yep, and you put your head down because really there's nowhere in Scripture that it says go to the coffee shop and spend 15 hours talking to somebody about Enneagram. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. But there are seasons that right. you Literally. actually have yeah. lots what are your of extra priorities? Yeah. margin, and there are yeah. seasons that you go, if I don't make the most of every hour time slot, I'm not going to get what God has called me to done. And I think it's important for us to talk about some distractions you can cut out immediately. Mm -hmm. yeah. And some are transitions. It's going to take a while. Turning of the Titanic. Right. Turning yeah. of the Titanic. Yeah. You don't want to lose everybody that's on deck. Yeah. Just a yeah. few. Or like if God says in this season it's time for you to leave a job. Okay, well, maybe you quit today. But right. in a lot of cases, no, you you have an exit strategy. Yes. Right. You know what I mean? Sure. Or I'm thinking about practical applications like yeah. all the women who are like, I want you to mentor me. Well, what you think is mentoring is the coffee shop thing. I, right. I can't do that with you. I don't have time yeah. for that. Yeah. But yeah. here's what I do have time for. If right. God has told me that we're supposed to have a connection, come to my house. Do you want to sit right. here and talk to me and, and help me chop up dinner clean. or fold some that's of those right. things? <laughs> okay. That's what it looks like. So right. sometimes it's a turning. Sometimes it's a rearranging. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. it is a, an immediate cut. And again, it always goes back to yes. discerning the voice of God to know right. how he wants you right. to do that. But the fitting of it all in because it's good is the problem. That right. is... It, it being good is not the defining That's right. of the decision. That's right. It being God is the defining totally. of the decision. And Absolutely. then everything else, it either fits or it doesn't. I think a lot of the other busy activities that we just add into our day that are actually not fruitful are the things that can take us out. I think when it all comes down to it, when it comes to distractions, when it comes to busyness, you have to sit down and evaluate. We're going to be measured on our fruitfulness. You know, when we come into heaven, the Lord's going to say, well done, good and faithful servant. And were you fruitful? Matthew 25, the, you know, there was uh, the master gave his three servants. To one he gave five talents, to one he gave two talents, to one he gave one talent. And, um, and then he saw what they did with what he gave them. And the one that had five made it 11 by the end of the parable. The one that had two made it four and the one that had one made it none. So you could be busy doing nothing and going backwards or you can be fruitful appearing to do less, but what you're doing is more focused and important, so it's more fruitful, and the fruit that you yield has a much greater impact than someone that's just busy and exhausted and not fruitful. And I think the more aware you are of yourself, your capacity, and in some yeah. cases, you know, you, you have to increase your personal capacity. Like, right. You know, right. Some of us are... How do you do that? <laughs> well, you're doing a really good job of it now. I'm watching you doing <laughs> yeah. it in real time. I'm watching your Insta stories and I'm going, this is awesome because there's a lot of um, rearranging. But, you know, Isaiah 54 says, enlarge the place of my tent, stretch, right. lengthen, strengthen. Right. And I'm always asking God as I'm right. getting older, I'm saying, I actually, you know, to the ability that I, I'm able to do this, I want you to enlarge right. my capacity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'll do all my bit. And then That's I want right. God to do his bit as well. And I think sometimes we, God wants to put fit more in, but he's saying, I don't have enough room mm -hmm. in yeah. who you are today to put right. all that on you. Right. So, so come on, let's stretch, let's lengthen, let's right. strengthen. So um, right. that's painful. Going to and the gym, wise. building your muscle is painful. Yeah. And so a lot of us are just lazy. You know, I'm, of course, I'm going to say that I'm an eight. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it's like you've just, you go, I want what you've got, but you're not willing to lift the right. weight that I'm lifting right. yeah. to get to that place to have that kind of capacity right. to do that. Yeah, I think right. the, dis the, the distractions for me are can be such a source of guilt because yeah. You are, for me, um, and I think the phone is a great example, but I'm always focused on where I'm not. Right. So it's like I'm always, I live my life perpetually right. looking through the rearview mirror mm, windshield. Right. I mean, rearview mirror instead of the front windshield. So it's like I'm here with you all, and I could be sitting here thinking like, oh, what about Carter and Conley? Are they okay? Right. Are right. they sick? Do they need me? And then I'm right. home, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I wish I would have spent more time with them. When we're at work, <laughs> we feel guilty for missing yeah. at home. When we're at home, we feel guilty for not keeping up with work. And it's like, yeah. you know, you're the fixing mac there. and cheese, but you're not thinking about your doctorate and vice versa. Yeah. It's like there's such a gift in just choosing to be present. Yes. 
just yeah, look absolutely. through the front windshield and 100%. say, I'm not going to look at the phone. I'm not going to think about Carter and Conley. I'm here with you guys. There's yeah. somewhere I'd rather and I be. I think if yeah, we're present, we actually have more energy. Yes. I it it extends your capacity, yeah, like you're saying. Yeah, remember when Dr. Cloud said, he said he doesn't like, Dr. Henry Cloud, so wise, yeah. but he said he doesn't like the metaphor of juggling balls. Right. Mm. Because you actually, you, <laughs> in juggling, you're always in the art of throwing. You're not hanging on to mm. anything. And, but there are times that we can hang on to more than we realize. Like Chris, as simple as this is, Chris said, why are you not doing audibles while you're on the elliptical? And I was like, I, I hadn't really thought about doing audibles. <laughs> she goes, the books you tell me you want to read just yeah, while you're on the elliptical, right. do the audible. That's right. And I was you're like, oh, that's not hard. That's not that's right. like throwing balls. That's, mm -hmm. oh, well, I'm right here. I'm right. kind of stuck trying to burn off these carbs mm -hmm. I so willingly consume. <laughs> I can actually listen to this book, but it's it's making the most out of the time that's he right. has given us, and he has given us enough time. Yeah. Some of you, you've been distracted. It's time for you to enroll in that course. For some of you, it's time to start serving in church. For some of you, it's time to enroll in that Bible school. It's just time to say, I'm going to stop saying no to the thing that God has called me to do. And I'm going to get about the Father's business. I'm going to fix my eyes on Jesus. He is the author. He is the finisher. He is faithful to complete the work that he started in me. I don't have to be distracted by trying to market myself, trying to open doors for myself, trying to make a way for myself. I'm going to trust that God is who he says he is and that God will do what he says he will do. I'm fixing my eyes on Jesus and I'm trusting Jesus with my future and my purpose and my destiny. So let me pray for you wherever you are. Father, I thank you. Thank you for every person on the other side of the screen. Father, my prayer today for my brothers and sisters in Christ is, Lord, that you would help them to stay focused on the God-given dream and the God-given purpose that you've put on the inside of them. Father, help each and every one of us to fix our eyes on you, to cut off those things that would distract us from you, from your purpose and from your calling. Father, we don't just want to finish. We want to finish well. We want to run our race and finish our course. So I pray that every single person on the other side of the screen Father, that they will run their race, they will finish their course, and they will bear much fruit in their lifetime for your glory in Jesus' name. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe today and you'll never miss a new upload. And don't forget to check out our Better Together shop. Thanks for being a part of our community.